Hi, welcome to the homestead. My name is Melissa and my family and I live on a five acre homestead in Wisconsin and we are gearing up for calving. We have a wonderful um, family cow, Apple. Uh, she's a six year old Guernsey. You can see her trying, she's uh, getting in the view over here. Are you gonna come say hi? Huh, are you gonna come say hi? Um, she is our six-year-old Guernsey cow. We've had her for two and a half years. It'll be three years in um, this like spring, and um, we absolutely love her. <laughs> she is not only uh, does she give us amazing, amazing raw milk. She is so sweet. She's just like another member of the family. She loves attention. Um, just is the sweetest thing. Um, our son even showed her at the fair this year and did great. So uh, we just love her to pieces. So she is actually due to calve. Um, today is her due date. <laughs> uh, I actually recorded this like a few days ago, but the sound quality was atrocious. And I've had this issue. If you're, you know, a lot of you watch my Milk With Me videos and um, the sound quality has been really difficult. Uh, really bad. Uh, it's just because this open barn and then there's like the birds and you know just other noises that the the phone tries to pick up anyways. So the sound, I was just I was like I'm done. I'm done. I recorded this whole video and I listened to it. And I was like oh my gosh I cannot put that out. It was just so bad. None of my editing would fix it. So I caved and I bought a microphone. So I'm new to this. So if it's all fuzzy and I hit it whatever. But I know I've tested it. I've done another video and it works. So yay, my video sound will be better from here on out. So because of that, long story short, I had to wait to record this until the, the microphone came and I had time again. Yay, so now we're at, on due date. <laughs> and Yes, she is getting closer, I can tell. Um, I don't think it'll be much longer. My guess was tomorrow that she'll have it, but um, yeah, she's definitely showing major signs. She's her udder's swelling up a lot. Her teats are getting really big. She's getting really floppy. She's um, her pins are not loosening yet, but um, she's had discharge, so uh, she's very, very cuddly. In fact, on Tuesday she was like, I don't even know how to describe it because she's a cow. How do you describe a cuddly cow? But I can just I have a very close relationship with my cow, hand milking her every single day. For months, you know, I just I really know when she when things are different. Okay, don't it's don't make it weird. I mean, it just it's, I could just tell, and she like just wanted attention on Tuesday, and um, so I thought, oh, and she had like a lot of um changes in her udder that day, and she doesn't necessarily get like huge udder um right before calving, um, so I thought, oh man, maybe today's the day. Well, I think she just wanted attention. <laughs> So we're still holding out. We're still holding out for baby, but we're just praying for a ha happy, healthy baby and mama. We do not know if it is a heifer or a bull calf. Uh, we didn't. We didn't get sex semen. Um, my vet did take a guess, but she's uh, when she did the ultrasound. But she said she's really terrible at it. So I'm not even gonna say uh, what it was, and because uh, she was like, "Don't put any money on that." Um, and then uh, we did. <laughs> We don't even know who the dad is. <laughs> uh, we <laughs> AI'd her with both Angus and Guernsey semen. So it's a mystery all around. Do we get a boy or a girl or a Guernsey or an Angus cross? <laughs> we do not know. So the big joke is we find out the daddy when the baby's born. So anyway, because it will be very obvious, <laughs> which, is, which is the father, uh, which took. So we're super excited. And... I have gathered up a bunch of supplies that will probably not be needed, hopefully will not be needed for um, after she has the calf. Most of it's, I mean, I don't think really any of it's for during or, well, I shouldn't say that. Yes, there is some for during. Um, so it's similar to like your pregnancy hospital bag that you're going to take to the hospital with you and you pack all this and you use like 10% of it. <laughs> you hardly use any. You use your chapstick and your nice socks and the clothes and, you know, you know, maybe something to freshen up. And that's like it. You don't use all the extra things that you think you're going to need. But um, 
with this, it is nice to have the supplies on hand just in case because a lot of things can happen. A lot of things can go wrong. Statistically wise, it'll be fine. Fingers crossed, everything will go smoothly. But if things do go wrong, it's the middle of the night, can't necessarily run to the farm store. Um, it's good to have it on hand. Now we do have um, friends that uh, live very close to us and they have a dairy farm and they're amazing and we love them so much and they are definitely on speed dial right now. They know that Apple is about to calve. Um, in fact, he was the one that did the AI. So he, they've been really, really excited to see, you know, when she calves and what she has. So our friends are our number one, my phone, which I'm recording on, so I can't like hold it up, but my phone is my number one priority <laughs> when it comes to calving because if I need them, which I will, um, I can call them and they will be here to help me. And I love that. So number one priority, good friends that know what they're doing because I only do this like once a year and I've only done it a couple of times. Actually, she's, yeah. So I won't go into the story of calving, the calving things we've had in the past, but I'm not, I mean, I read a lot, but you know, like actual experience, I don't have a ton of it. So it's great to have friends that are super knowledgeable. And, you know, if I'm anxious about something, then they can be like, no, 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 it's fine. That's normal. That's awesome. They can talk me down from the ledge, right? So that is my number one. I'm just going to show you all the stuff I have gathered. And it's not that. Um, all the stuff I've gathered for calving purposes. <sighs> All right, so I have this box that lives in the barn. It is my milking box, we call it. It's just a show box. I um, don't even know where we got it from. I think my father-in-law got it for us. I don't remember. But inside, let me open it and then I'll move you again. I can't do it with one hand. Inside, I have lots of supplies. And it's not super organized, but it's organized enough that I know where things are. So I, and then there's some stuff in a basket here that I just am keeping at the house because I don't necessarily need it in the barn um, until, I don't need it until after she calves or, you know, closer to, I, I don't need to keep it out in the um, barn. So let's just get started. I'm going to start with my basket down here. So I have my milking bucket. This I have, always have that. And that is Obviously, I'll be milking her once she has the calf. We do calf share. So she will keep the calf with her for, I don't know, four to six months. We'll see how things go. But um, we have had in the past where we had to help um, feed the calf with her first one that she had here. He had some tendon issues. He couldn't stand on his own. So we had to milk out the colostrum and feed it to him. And eventually, we were able to help him get stronger and he was able to nurse on his own. But just in case, um, I have the milking bucket that will be used right away. But of course, you know, even if I don't need to feed the calf, I will be helping, I will be milking her. We let the calf get as much colostrum as the calf can, but there's always more than the calf needs. And what we do with that is we freeze it um, in, I use like breast milk freezer bags and, or you can use like, um, like Ziploc bags, zipper bags, you know, freezer kind of but that works awesome in case you know a f you like if we had an issue where we needed uh, an animal a sick animal it, colostrum is so good um, to help out or if someone um, you know had a, an issue with a calf and needed colostrum we could help them out so we do freeze some in um, in bags but then we also freeze some in ice cube trays for ourselves because colostrum is super healthy for you um, it's a little bit salty to drink so it's not bad. It's really not that bad. I've uh, I've heard people are like, oh, colostrum, bleh, it's so gross. Well, we tried it and I'm like, it's really not that bad. It's just a little bit salty. Uh, so what we do is we freeze it in ice cube trays. And then once it's frozen, we pop it into a large like gallon freezer zipper bag. And then we just throw them in smoothies and they make smoothies. It makes your smoothie like super creamy and frothy and delicious and gives you the boost of nutrition. So yay for colostrum. So the bucket for milking colostrum, um, milking colostrum, obviously. And then once the milk comes in, I'm just, I'm, I'm in, you know, I gotta take over. I shouldn't say I don't take over, but I will be milking like crazy again. We'll be, I'll be, hand, I hand milk. So 
be back to milking time. Yay. My arms are, I don't know if they're ready for it, but they'll have to be, right? And while we're talking about that, I might as well show that I have a calf bottle. I have a couple of calf bottles, so if needed, I got it. Um, okay, next thing in my bag. Ooh, that's the garbage. Don't need that. Ooh, I was supposed to wash this out. I forgot. I will wash this out when I go back today. Um, again, with calf feeding, this is just iodine. Don't get grossed out. It just spilled, and I was going to go wash it, and I just forgot. Um, this is a tube tubing bag. If for some reason the calf is having a hard time and needs to be tubed, I have it. We have it just from when we had some bottle calves and didn't have a nurse cow. So um, we haven't needed it, but it's good to have on hand because sometimes you'd have lamp. So if she calves that night, um, this will be great to help see what's going on. Um, and our lights in here aren't the greatest. They're, they, they're fine, but you know, this just gives a little bit extra light and it's much easier to have your hands free. Next, I have molasses. So I don't keep this in the barn because it's molasses and it'd be hard to pour. Um, and it is fall right now, but we're having some cool, really cool, cold nights. So um, yeah, makes it easier to pour. Plus I need to have the warm water from the house when I give this to her. What I do with this is I have also have a bucket and a nice cleaned out bucket except the hay that's in it, but she doesn't care about that. And after she calves, she will get a few buckets of this with warm water and molasses. It gives her a really good boost of energy. The sugar is good for her. It's super healthy, um, and she loves it. So she'll drink bucket after bucket after bucket. When a cow is preparing to calve, she will likely go off her feed and off her water. So by the time she calves, you know, expends all that energy, She's going to be thirsty. She's going to be hungry. So giving her some really, really, really healthy um, water with that molasses, so like I said, with that, that sugar boost, that energy, and in a healthy way is great. So blackstrap molasses, and I'll probably use, this is what, a quart. I'll probably use this whole thing. She'll get quite a few buckets of it, and it's good to give her, um, I'll give her probably a couple buckets when um, she calves, and then probably like another 12 hours later, give her another couple buckets. And I just like, I don't know, eyeball it. I'll probably give like a quarter of this at a time. So what? That would be about a cup at a time to five gallons. It might not be quite right. If I need more, I'll get more. Okay, next. We will go to the box. My milking box right now is full of gloves and iodine, like, full, full, full. My mom works at a surgery center and gets a lot of iodine and gloves for me. If they open up a kit and um, they need a little squirt of iodine for their surgery, they throw away the rest of the bottle. It's ridiculous. So she and her friends, everyone that works there, they know that they, um, they just save all these bottles of iodine for me and I consolidate them to bigger bottles. I have tons of iodine. And then the same with gloves. I won't even get into how, what a waste our healthcare system is with stuff like that. But they open up a kit and the wrong size glove for the doctor or whatever, they throw them away. Ridiculous. So I have a million gloves, um, surgical gloves. I use them while mil milking because I had a really terrible experience with my first cow. This is long story short. End up with staph A and staph A can be on your hands. And I guess I'm just scarred from it. So I always milk with gloves just to make things make things um, a little bit cleaner because even though I you know I'm clean and I make sure her teats are clean any little cut in her teeth that maybe I can't see and if there's something in my hands it just prevents a transfer of bacteria onto her teats which would cause mastitis and other big issues again so it's just my personal pref personal preference and these gloves are great they are really not uncomfortable to milk with at all so always have gloves and with calving, you never know when you're going to need gloves. Along with that, I have towels, surgical towels. <laughs> Again, yay, thank you, Mom. Lots of surgical towels, just in case we need that for calving. The gloves that I have are the dun, 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 up to your shoulder gloves, right? The, what, we got 10 of these. My goodness, that's going to last me like 10 years. Oh, yeah, maybe not, but... That's going to last me a long time. When I have one calf a year, maybe. So 
So this, why am I pulling one out? I don't know, because I'll make a thumbnail with it. <laughs> um, and I have a lot of them, and it's not going to go bad. I can still use it. I'll just put it back. Look, look at this thing. So, see, I'm ready to cat. I'm ready to help her, except it's my left hand, and I wouldn't use that. But yeah, so I've got the gloves. Go up to here. Hopefully, I will not need this. Hopefully. I think you can figure out what that would be for. If I needed to help her, Cap was in the wrong position. Iodine. I told you I have iodine. Tons. I have a bajillion gallons of this. Um, again, if I have, when I milk her, I'll need iodine to clean her teeth. And then also, um, some people use, they dip the calves' navel in iodine. I'm, I don't think we will. We never have had to. And it's not a like particularly muddy or wet time of year right now um then i definitely would it's not like gross but we'll see i don't know if i need it it's here and it, the nice thing is I've got this handy cap and i could just use this to dip the cap. i don't have a lot of this left but um she doesn't get too um it's dynamint she doesn't get too much edema um, at least she hasn't in the past but Dynamint is just a lotion that has some mint in it that helps reduce the edema. And if I need, excuse me, if I need more, well, for one, I could get some more. Although Otherwise, I could just use lotion and add some um, peppermint essential oil, which I have. So, And it's got mint with natural calendula, and I'm pretty sure I have that too. So I could just whip together some lotion and you rub that on the udder and it just helps reduce that swelling so it's they really like it it also helps them let down when there's a lot of edema um like i said we didn't have that too bad but we'll see i also have this probably should go in the house with me too i have dextrose and calcium gluconate solutions those will help in the case of ketosis or uh, milk fever issues, uh, these do have to be body temperature when given. So I would, um, yeah, have to warm these up if needed. Hopefully we do not need that. Um, and on the lines of that, we also, our friends, I will be ringing up. They have um, some bovacalc that we will be buying from them and a uh, a gun that you uh, give it a bolus. This is a bolus gun. So you put the, it's like a gigantic um, pill that you put in here. And so it's like the whole width of that or the whole, and then you put it in their mouth, down their throat, or, you know, to the base of the throat, and then just shove it in because you can't give a cow a pill. They don't just take it nicely. And that's how you have to give it to them. Um, and so they will give her a bovacal calcium um, supplement when she calves. To help prevent milk fever um, but the bova calc does it is even bigger than this it requires a special um, gun and so what we'll do is just we've already agreed with them when she calves i will let them know i'll go up to the farm i'll get it give her the the bolus um, and then return it so then we don't have to buy our own gun which we could but again we don't have a lot of calves around here so it just makes sense to borrow when you can right oh to go along with milk fever um or ketosis or anything i have uh iv set so if i need to give her an iv that's what those bottles were you hook this up to the iv onto the cow i hope we don't have to do that but it's here if we do and this uh propylene glycol she did um apple did have ketosis issues with her very first calf and had to the vet out and do all the like the pumping stuff into her and anyway she gave me a bunch of pro propylene glycol if um and i still have it from last time it's not going to go bad so um i just would add this to some water and give this to her to help if we get to that and along the lines of ketosis i have more uh ketone strips that would help me determine if she does have ketosis this um these literally are just from i think walgreens or something they're just ketone strips you gps on them and 
then it tells you if you know there's issues i don't remember how but again i would just refresh my memory it's been a while but i could refresh my memory if um i needed that i do remember her symptoms of ketosis so yeah but these are great to help to tell if you're in a danger zone or not okay I have a list here. Let me see what I forgot. Exam gloves, iodine, straw. straw. So I also have straw and we have her stall bedded. We have three horse stalls here and she prefers to calve in the middle horse stall. I don't know. We have had, um, you know, like under our lean to all bedded nicely in the past and everything. She just, that's where she calves is in the middle horse stall. That's her spot. So we bedded down the middle horse stall really good uh keep having to add to it because the horses also enjoy it uh but so we got the straw nice bedded for that and alfalfa for after calving she'll need all that energy from the alfalfa chains or ropes um apparently we have some somewhere and my husband just hasn't gotten them out um i probably should but just in case we need to pull anything again in that case i'm gonna be on the phone calling up my friends Oh, yes, I didn't bring the dish soap because it's in my kitchen. But dish soap is something that I will bring out if needed. Um, that and a bucket, you know, and water could be used if, you know, suds and up if we need it for something, you know, whatever we need to wash up or um, to go with the glove that I demonstrated. Um, if we need to reach in her uh, dish soap can be a, a used as a lubricant, but I also have some lube somewhere. I do have some lubricant um, to be used in that in the case that we need to go in. Um, Ivy water molasses. Oh, this one's hanging up. All right, hanging up in plain sight, right? Calf blanket. Oh, isn't it so cute? It's so little. So that's the calf blanket. We again are. It is fall, and we have some cool nights. And so we actually just um, had like three almost freezing nights. And so that's kind of why I had the calf blanket washed and prepared and ready because of those nights. We've passed those nights and now we'll, they'll still be cool, but not as cold. So I don't know that I will have to use this, but it's good to have it ready just in case. We don't, you know, the as long as the calf's fine, you know, that's, we'll let it be. But just in case we have the calving, the calf blanket. Now, I think... I think I've gotten through everything. I think I did. I think that's all I have here. Again, that was in no order. And clearly, that was just grab what I could. Um, I hope that we don't have to use most of this. And we probably won't have to use most of this. Knock on wood. Lots of prayers being said. Um, in fact, I don't care if she has a heifer or a bull. I mean, I do. I would really, really like a heifer friendly. But in the long run, honestly... I just want her to be healthy. I want the calf to be healthy. We've had rough, rough deliveries, rough, um, just hasn't been easy. So I'm just like third time's the charm, right? We got to do this. We got to have a good one. So, and again, anything more that I'm going to need, which I'm sure, um, there's some other things that we could get, but again, we have our friends that are so close. We are so blessed. If, if I was in a situation where I was, really far from a farm store or really far from a vet or didn't have a vet local or didn't have friends available i would have a lot more stuff medical stuff just in case but i have things but um again i have people in my life that are more experienced than me and i would rather call them and you know get their advice and get their help and then if i need to buy some things from them we have syringes we have um uh, needles and all that. So if we need to give her anything, we have all of that. But um, as far as the medications themselves or whatever might be needed that we're missing, they are there to help us in, you know, I like, I hope that doesn't sound like oh, they'll just do it all for us. But that's not what I mean. I just mean like the things that I'm missing that I don't know that I'm missing, they can help me um, help us because you know what, I don't think you can ever be prepared for something going, you know, if something went wrong, I couldn't be completely 100% prepared. So yeah. Um, and I don't want to buy the entire feed store of stuff for a calf, you know, every 
year, year and a half that we have a calf and it goes bad, you know, in between. So again, we are just very blessed to have some really, really awesome friends nearby that will help us. And that's that. I think that is my hospital bag for my hospital bag for my family cow. And I hope that is helpful to you if you, you know, are getting a family cow. If you're in the same situation your cow's going to have, maybe this will give you good ideas or maybe a, a decent list of I'll stuff. I'll try to list it out in the uh, a description below so that, because I know this was kind of all around, all over the place, um, but I will just list out what I showed you uh, and maybe that'll be helpful too uh, if you're looking for a list of, of things that you can have on hand for calving. Yeah, so fingers crossed. Wish us luck for great calving. Good um, Guernsey heifer vibes would be great, <laughs> but really, seriously, all we want is a healthy calf and a healthy cow. So thank you so much for watching, for subscribing, and I will see you guys next time, hopefully with a calf video. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Ready to have that baby?